she sees in that dressed up city do that I sure can't say. He must have talked that away, Lolly. He's a fine upstanding gentleman if ever I see one. Why don't he let little Mill work in the mill whenever he's short handed? Yeah, don't he walk her home every chance he gets to be alone with her? Mill ain't afeard to walk home by herself, is she? Of course she ain't. Our Nell ain't afeard of nothing. I hear Mr. Hayes tell her when he first come to be foreman of the mill that she had not to go roaming around those mountains by herself because there are bars in them hills. Them bars won't hurt little now. The bars all love little now. That Mr. Hayes is a lot more dangerous than any bar. I don't trust that man. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing. What you got against Mr. Hayes, Wally? He's from the city, ain't he? He lives up at a mansion on the hill and he wears fine clothes. And he goes with people where he can even look at us. Well, why shouldn't Mel marry that rich man? Our little Mel is like a little flower. The sunshine lives in her eyes and her pretty face and taken away makes folks love her. Why shouldn't she marry that pays or any other rich man would want to for his wife? I'm for that he'll pay for folks from these parts thought it was Jack and Logan who would marry her. Now there's a real man. He's not from the city. Well, his hands may not be all soft and white like he'll pay for but one thing's for sure, those horns come from honest work. But Jack is poor. His wife will have to slave for him and wear herself out. While he'll pay his wife to take things easy and be a real lady. Huh, well, I suppose she'll marry whoever she wants to. Have you ever told her about this? <coughs> you know what I mean. About what, Lauren? Have you ever told her that she ain't really your granddaughter? You must have even mentioned such a thing. <laughs> Right outside the old barn yonder, nigh on to 20 years ago. Paul Perkins went out to take care of the sick lamb. Tell her he tripped over something. I heard she was in the barn. Tain't so. Paul called to me and I came her running out. So I guess I know the straight of it. There was little now all in a in basket, most froze to death by the cold. How was she dressed? Like any babe would have for his parents. I always knew Nell came from wealthy folks. She's from Big Bugs, all right. You mustn't talk that away, Lolly. She's from humans, not bugs. <coughs> I stooped down to the snow and picked her up, and she just looked up at me so coy like, and her was so pretty that she won my heart right then and there. Did Paul Perkins want to send it to the orphanage? Did not. Paul fell in love with her taking away as much as I did. We decided then and there that if nobody come to claim her, we'd raise her up as our very own child. And that you have, Tink. Nobody can deny that. Paul was working on his invention then. The invention what he claimed would someday make us all rich. But he passed away before he could start. Right before he died, he called me to his bedside and made me give him a solemn promise. And I always look at him now. Where is the invention? I've always kept it right here with me, just in case somebody don't want to buy it. Where is them papers? Them papers he wrote that invention on. I am telling them. Them papers is to be Nell's wedding present. Are you going to tell her then she's no queen to you? You mustn't even mention such a thing, Molly. Why, it would break my sunbeam's heart if she ever even told such a thing. Oh, well, you know what's best, I'm sure. It's all in a lifetime. Just the same, I'd like to see those papers. I'd soon know for sure whether that invention was worth anything. It's worth a fortune. I know that because there was a city fella all prepared to buy it. But he lost all his money and couldn't pay the price that Paul wanted. Well, i got to be on my way. Be sure to tell Nell I was here. 
to be in church on Sunday. She's to sing in the choir. And I'll be on hand to hear her, for she has the voice of an angel. <laughs> be careful you're not broke to death before you get home, Molly. Just as soon as I get the patent launched. 
I can pay your father back the $500 and the 50 that I'm going to borrow from you. Aren't you coming with me? I'll not leave this place until I have my hands on those who found that adventure. Now leave me, Vera. The papers that you were going to have in your possession? Yes, as soon as they're in my possession. <laughs> I'm going to go down to the old mill stream and wait there. Okay. You don't think there's any danger from the mud hounds down at the mill stream, do you? None at all. Now leave me, Vera, before we're discovered and everything is lost. Hurry! Well, aren't you coming with me? Again. <laughs> <laughs> I will not leave this place until I get my hands on those papers. Okay, well, I'll, I'll be waiting. Vera? Yes? Haven't you forgotten something? <laughs> oh. Killed not until after we're married, it wouldn't be proper. I am referring to the $50 that you offered to oh, loan me. Oh, okay. yeah. You're going to make someone such a dependable husband, I hope, for me. Um, good luck. Thanks, Vera. I hope you go to a warm place. What? I mean, I hope you go to a warm place to wait for me. Oh. Now remember, not a word of this to anyone. I'll see you soon. Hope I never see her again. Once I get my hands on those papers, it's off to Paris. What you now? Perhaps I can persuade the old woman to part with the papers for a small sum. There's nothing to be lost in trying. <laughs> now for the dirty work. I'm glad to be taken for one so fair and so pure. Granny, I've looked everywhere for Nell, but I must have missed her on the road. Perhaps she's taken the bloodhounds for a romp. She just loves to race with them animals. Oh, I hate the beasts myself. I must speak to Nell about them. She doesn't realize how dangerous they can be. Ain't danger except to them as harms them. Why, one of them animals is named after Nell. There ain't a man, woman, or dumb critter in these parts what wouldn't give their lives for our men. And no wonder. Granny, I know what sharp eyes you have. I suppose you've noticed the way the land lies. Why, what do you mean by that? I didn't even know our land sloped. <laughs> the old fool. I'm referring to the fact that you probably notice I've been paying marked attention to your little Nellie. Well, I noticed you spent a heap of money on her at the ice cream sociable, and you give her bouquets of wildflowers time and again. I don't suppose a trouble a fellow would go to that kind of trouble and expense if he didn't mean something. Then you have noticed. I know that I'm not good enough for Nell. No man is. But the fact is, I love her, and I want to make her my wife. I've known that for some time now. Young people can't fool old Granny Perkins know how. Then I have your consent. <laughs> Are you sure you aim to do right by Arnell? I give you the word of a haze, and you know what that means. Nell will never have to want for anything, ever. And to thank my little Nell Mary after all these years. Granny, I suppose you'll be wanting to buy some sort of wedding present for Nell. I know that you can't afford much, so I'll give you some money that you can buy a handsome gift. That's mighty kind of you, Mr. Oh, you must call me Hilton now. After all, I'm practically one of the family. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, I have a wedding present for you. You are referring, of course, to the invention that the old man Perkins left. Who told you about that? I heard that worthless Jack Logan talking about it down to the mill. It seems that Nell told him all about it, and now he's pretending to be in love with her so that he can ask her to marry him so that he can get his hands on those papers. So Jack Logan has betrayed the trust that Nell placed in him? I never would have thought such a thing. I remember Nell telling me she was going to ask his advice about it. That man is not to be trusted. Why, just the other day I heard him talking to the boys at the mill and... Oh well, that doesn't matter. 
When Nell and I are married, I'll handle all of her business affairs for her, and yours too. It'll be fine to have a real man in the family again. I have it. You can give me the plans to the invention now, and I'll have my lawyer look them over to make sure they're in proper working order before you give them to Nell. Why? But now that I'm in the family, you might as well profit from my business judgment. But you ain't in the family yet. But I will be before long. I just want to have a copy made of the original drawings, and then I'll give it back to you. I think I'll keep them parrot papers till you and Alice married. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do trust me, don't you, Granny? Don't you, Granny? Of course I trust you. Fine. Then, where are those papers? I think I'll keep them papers till after you. Perhaps if I were to give you some money as evidence of good faith, you'll feel better about parting with those papers. Suppose we say, uh, $10. You could keep the money and buy a handsome dress for our wedding. Ten dollars for one dress? I never heard of such wanton waste. When Nell and I are married, you'll never have to want for money ever again. You can have any part of this, and there's plenty more where that came from. My little Nell married to a billionaire. I can't hardly believe it. Come, come. Where are those papers? Well, I guess it's all right. They're in the... If I was to give you the papers now, it would spoil the thrill of handing them to you and when you and Nell are married. I'll just keep them till after the ceremony is performed. But see here, Granny. I'll give you any part of this money if you'll just give me those papers. Son, you'll have to learn. There ain't enough money made to make a woman change her mind once it's made up. I can see you ain't had much experience with women. Of course I have. I mean, no. Nell is the only girl that I've ever taken a fancy to. After you and she's married, she'll learn you plenty, Nell will. Well, I gotta go out and farm and feed the land and corn meal. You can come with me if you want to. <laughs> I must find a way to make that old fool change her mind. Once those papers are in my possession, I can shake the dust of the mill from off of me and never enter it again. <laughs> Gosh, I look awful. 
ain't never seen you look so pretty, Nell. Just like when we was younger, and you used to talk over fans about what we'd ever do if we was able to go to school. Oh, I remember how we used to sort of wish that we was rich and I had books full of learning so you could carry them for me to and from the schoolhouse. I'd do more than that for you, Nell, if you'd only let me. Would you, Jack? I sort of thought you forgot all about your little playmate. It's been so long since you spoke to me. Have you missed me now? Ain't saying that I have, and I ain't saying that I ain't. That's for you to find out. <laughs> <laughs> I missed you something terrible, Nell. There, it's out, and I'm glad of it. So am I. I got plenty to tell you. Only, I was feared you wouldn't want to hear it. Oh, Granny said, oh, men is silly, and I guess she's right. You see, I got it all screened out, how I can give you a whole lot of land down to old Bowers' place, and then I'm going to leave my job at the mill and take some of the boys with me to do the farming. Oh, is that all you wanted to say? I thought you had something real special to tell me. <laughs>
something, it's stand. Mr. Carlton, the owner of the mill, will also stand by my decision. Not one penny for the dogs who are trying to hold up the honest men who are trying to support them. You'll be sorry for this, Hayes. Mr. Hayes, to you. I'll not have any young clod offer telling me how to run our business. Now take my answer to the men and tell them that if any one of them dare quit, they'll never work in the Carlton Mills again. I'll take your answer to the men. I'll stand by them in their hour of need, too. And I'll work my fingers to the bone trying to help each and every one of them. I am poor, but I'd rather be a poor man with a heart than a rich man without a conscience. Bring 
remarkable virtues for a nameless waiter. Now you listen to me. Either you'll marry me by sundown tomorrow, or I'll publish the facts before everyone in Wheelan County. Think of the shame. <laughs> Think of the disgrace. <laughs> shame. And all the stories Granny told me about my beautiful ma and my handsome pa were false. Granny never saw your mother or your father. In fact, no one around here ever has. And Jack Logan told you this? On my word of honor as a gentleman. What has honor to do with a cat such as you? I'd sooner be at the bottom of the old mill stream with a stone around my neck than to be married to a heartless brute like you. I'll break your proud spirit. I'll break it as I've broken others before you. If you don't believe, if you, if you don't believe what I'm telling you, ask Granny to deny it. When she's confronted with the facts, she'll confess to the truth. Come, come. What is your answer? I don't believe what you're saying. I don't believe Granny could lie to me all these years. If I ain't Granny sitting there, then where did this locket come from? Granny has always told me that the picture inside was that of my mother. Don't be a little fool. Anybody could buy a locket. Now, if you don't believe me, go ask Grant. I will ask her. And even if what you're saying is true, I'll never marry you, Hilton Hayes. I'll never marry any man but Jack Logan. He has no intention of marrying you whatsoever. He's only pretending to be in love with you so that he can ask you to marry him so that he can get his hands on the papers that the old man Perkins left. What's that you say? He knew about those papers, didn't he? Once he has his hands on those papers, he'll never be seen in this region again. Oh, I, I ain't Granny's little Nell. Jack is faithless. Oh, who can I turn to? Oh.
You've been crying. What's happened? I'm leaving the homestead forever. Well, leave it? What do you mean? You know very well what I mean. It's no use for you to go on pretending any longer. Well, what's happened? When I left here a short time ago, you and me was engaged to be married. That was a fool I knew you were just playing this game with me. Oh, Jack. How oh, could you deceive me so? How oh, could you? Oh. Oh. I ain't done no deceiving, Nell. I don't even know what you're talking about. You denied that you spoke about me to Hilton's case. You denied you told him. I ain't told him nothing, except that you and me was going to be married. It's no use for you to go on fooling me any longer. You know I can't marry no man now. Why can't you? Because what you told him, hey, because I've got no right to the name of Perkins. I'm just a bit of driftwood to be tossed hither and yon. I won't believe a word of what he says. Just ask Granny Perkins. She'll prove that you're her granddaughter. Oh, I already asked her. And she told me the truth. I've got no right to her name. Then I'll give you my name. Such as it is, to keep forever. We'll be married right away. And nothing will ever separate us. Do you mean it, Jack? Of course I mean it. Well, can't you see that I love you, gal? Well, I'd gladly die for you if it would help any. Come, Nell. We'll be married in a little church, Mom, where my mom and pa was hit. Oh, no thank you, Jack. I thank you just the same, but I could never let any man carry my burden. Wherever we went, folks would point the finger of shame at me. I must go out in the cold, cruel world. <laughs> I still care for you, to protect you. Now, Kelton Hayes is telling everybody you and he is going to be married. Say so? There ain't a word of truth in it. Oh, I'm so glad. He's spreading stories about you too, Jack. What kind of stories? He's telling everybody he fired you from the mill because you were his honest. I'll shove them words down his throat. It's the last thing I ever do. <laughs>
stock market with money that belongs to my bill. Why, no, I know that's true. That's not true. You're just making it up because I've become so popular with the men. There isn't a hand at the bill that has anything to do with you. By whose orders did you cut their wages? Why, I, I did it to save you money. That money went right into your pocket. I know what I'm talking about. An accountant went over the books today and discovered a vast shortage. Only you could have taken the money. You scoundrel. I am not to stand here and be falsely accused any longer. Come back here, Hayes. You and me have a score to settle.
He kicked you in the head, Nell. Oh, no, he didn't mean me. He kicked Nell the bloodhound in the head. He a lust-hated dog and dumb animal. He won't get away. The sheriff is waiting for him outside. I'll see that Hayes gets his just desserts. This shall be yours, my dear. What would you like to have, first of all? Uh, what about Jack Morgan? <laughs> now that I ain't just a nameless way by me to be a famous period, can I have Jack in the city with me? Logan shall be placed at the head of the mill in his former position. I shall see that he has every opportunity for advancement. <laughs> Out of Hayes' pockets just before he climbed up into the tree. It was Hayes who took them. What's Hayes doing up in a tree? Wasn't the sheriff waiting for him? The other bloodhound chased him up there before the sheriff could get his hands on him. The sheriff is out there now trying to coax the dog away. I'll bet Hayes wishes he never kicked that dog. And I'll bet even now he wishes he'd done right by our nail. Yeah. 
Thanks to Justin.